Welcome to another episode of Mark Ryan Photography Presents. Today I'm going to show you how I edit some of my landscape photography. Alright, this is one of the pictures I want to work on. It's an HDR picture that I took in Colorado. I've already completed the HDR process that I showed you in the last tutorial. Now I want to work on some problem areas. First of all, I had a bit of dust on my sensor, which you can see those dots. I also have some artifacts from when I converted to the HDR process. Now the whole picture, I like it, um, but also the bottom part is a little bit dark in some areas. So I'm going to want to bring up the value on the land because I like the color of the sky as it is. So the first thing I do to all my pictures is I duplicate the bottom layer and then I go through a sharpening process. I use unsharpened mask and the first one I run is just a contrast booster. I have a big wide radius around 80 to 81 and the amount of sharpening is 32. This just kind of ups the contrast in the area and then I'll go ahead and run unsharp mask one more time. But this time instead of boosting the contrast, I actually want to sharpen the scene. So the radius is a very small radius, 0.8 pixels, but the amount is um, anywhere between 170. Sometimes I go as high as 220. Um, for this scene, I thought 184% looks pretty good. And this is sharpen the edges, um, which you have to do for most files coming out of a digital camera these days. Like the way it looks, but it's still a little dark on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the layer, Control J or Command J, depending on what OS you use. And then it duplicates the layer, so it makes an exact copy. And then what I choose for the blending options is I go into Lighten. Lighten didn't have quite as dramatic effect as I wanted, so I went ahead and changed it to screen, and you can see the difference. It dramatically lightens the whole image. This is a simple way just by duplicating the layer. Now what I have to do is I have to mask the area off because the sky is now too bright, and so I create a, a layer mask, and now I'm just going to paint in a big fat black brush over, and it's going to hide that part of the duplicated layer. So now what I have is I have <clears throat> cover, uh, what I'm doing is I'm covering up the top of the screen of the clouds so they're back into the brightness that I like but the ground still gets that added lightning boost. Now in Photoshop there are a ton of ways to do almost everything. I could have done this multiple ways but I wanted to show you today how easy it is to just duplicate, use the screen blending mode and then begin to mask off what you don't want. Now I took a big fat brush just to get it efficient and then I'm going to work in with a very soft tip brush the areas where the mountains meet the sky. Now by using a soft tip brush I don't have to be exact as I would if I was using a hard brush and if I ever miss a spot if I go too low then I can just come back and use white instead of black. White reveals black hides whenever you're painting on a layer mask. And so I'm painting around, you know, so I got a little too low there, so I un undid it, Command Z, and I just came back and repainted it. And if you click on just the mask, you can see some areas you've missed. So I all clicked on the mask, it brought just the mask up, and I could fill in some areas that I missed. It's looking pretty good. I'll mess around with the opacity um, until I get it exactly where I want it. I'll mess around um, so it's not overly bright, but it's just exactly the amount of brightness I want. And 43% looks pretty good to me. Now here's what I'm going to do. Uh, you'll notice that because I duplicated the layer, I'm also duplicating all the noise in the image. So I've sharpened, which is going to bring which is going to bring that noise back out. But I also duplicated. So that's also going to give me even more noise. So what I do to get rid of noise is I use a plugin. It's called Noiseware Professional. I find it to do the best job of any noise program. And I never really tweak um, the settings very much. I just pretty much use it the default setting unless I have a special image. And you can see what it's going to do. Um, it's, it, it has a really good accurate preview. And so I can see what it does to my image. Now it's going to soften some of the trees up a little bit. But I think that's okay because um, I think the noise looks worse than having a little soft branches. So after I did it, you'll notice it's a very subtle change. 
but it took out some of the noise. All right, here's what I like to do. Now that I've made a lot of important changes, I like to combine all those changes. I could flatten the image right now, but if I flatten the image, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lose the ability to redo any of the changes I've made. So what I do is I do Shift, Alt, Command, E, and what that does is it flattens all the images onto a new layer. So layer two in this example is a composite of all my layers. Now I've got some sensor dust, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the healing brush to heal that sensor dust out. And anytime you use the healing brush, you have to be careful that you don't get any funky pixels. Sometimes it picks up on pixels you don't want to do it. In a case where I have that happen, I might, sh I might shift over to the stamp tool or I might undo it and just manipulate it. I might even switch tools to try to get it working. But sensor dust is a pretty easy, common problem that you have and it's very easy to fix just by using the healing brush tool. Now, I like to zoom in and make sure I get all of that sensor dust out. Because the images are so large, sometimes by looking at just 75%, you're not seeing all the area. Now, as I pointed out earlier, I have some artifacts. This was due to my HDR um, tone mapping, and because of that, I got some funky pixels. And I'm going to, again, use the healing brush. And this time, I'm going to alt-click so that the area that I alt-clicked on is now going to replace the bad area in the clouds. And I'll just do this many times until it looks good. Uh, when you're working in the sky, when you're working with clouds, people don't exactly know what it's supposed to look like, so you have a little leeway to play around with. And you can pull from the clouds, you can pull from the sky, just do what looks best, and spend your time making sure that you get rid of all those artifacts. Now, the last thing I like to do is I like to dump this down to 8 bits. By doing it down to 8 bits, um, you can save as a JPEG, which I like archiving my files as JPEGs. And I'll go ahead and save that. And that is a completed picture in my book. Those are just a few of the things I like to do. Um, they're relatively simple things, and once you've mastered them, it only takes a few minutes to apply those to each and every image you have. Let me show you the final picture so you get an idea of what it looked like.